And we are live. Welcome to the room. Show. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I appreciate you taking time coming out on the podcast. Absolutely. So um, for the people on my platform that don't know, can you tell them about your brand, about what you do a little bit? Sure. I'm an integrated nutrition, health, and wellness coach. So I help people with sort of mind, body, healing, nutrition, connecting to themselves, It can sometimes be like autoimmune disease, sometimes weight loss, or just really learning to listen and trust themselves. And I have a podcast where we talk about the same things. I I have a lot of different experts on. We talk about different tools to really optimize both the mind and the body. Right. Super cool. So uh, what made you want to start the podcast? Well, I used to be an actress and a comedian. And I used to do stand up and I love talking and I love like listening to podcasts. And when I pivoted, I got very sick in my 20s, which is how I ended up in wellness going back to school. I had like an undiagnosable autoimmune disease. So I really was searching for a lot of different answers. And it was really hard for me to find wellness. There was not like straightforward answers. So I really learned a lot about, you know, neuroscience, gut health, nutrition, all kinds of different things to understand like why both my physical and mental body, like my mind weren't doing well. And it made me so incredibly like interested and passionate about learning. And I got very wrapped up in listening to other people's podcasts. And I just started to want to have conversations with interesting people and learn more and then be able to share those conversations with people who could also heal or optimize their lives. Right. And, um, you know, you being a podcaster and do everything you just said, um, how do you feel about like the podcast world? Like, I love it. I mean, it's so saturated. There are like so many. So you can very much listen to a podcast. I think about everything and like sift through a lot of different stuff, but I find it, it's a really cool way to interact and get to know people on a different level. And I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work too. Yeah. yeah, Yes. Luckily, I have a producer that does a lot of the back end stuff, which I think I'm just not good. Logistics are like not my thing. So I can show up and do the connection and tell the stories and interviewing. But like beyond that, the editing, all that stuff, that that's that makes me crazy. Yeah. And like with podcasting, one thing I learned um, since I've been doing this is you can meet so many different people. You can learn a lot of things, too. Oh my God, so much. And I find that everyone, it's a really beautiful way to connect and tell stories vulnerably. So you end up really, I feel like getting, I I don't know, I sort of feel like I fall in love with everyone I talk to because everyone has such a unique and different either, you know, story where they overcame something or a passion that they are bringing where every time I feel like I learn something, I make a new friend. it, It feels like it builds international community in a really cool way. Right, and it really does, and you can meet and talk to people from all over the world. Yeah. Where are you? I'm um, in Connecticut. Oh, where? Uh, Hartford area. Oh, nice. I uh, used to live in New York City, so not too far, and I had a long-term partner who grew up in Manchester outside of that, in Connecticut, so I was in Connecticut a fair amount. And where are you at? I now live in Lisbon, Portugal. Where, where's that next to? Uh, Portugal is right next to Spain oh, in Europe. Okay. But I, yeah, I lived in New York, lived in LA, lived in London, and then I ended up here because it's kind of like LA. It's a little bit sunnier, sunny, warm LA weather, much cheaper, near the ocean, really good wine. And I seen him on your story. He was on that boat in that nice area. Yeah. 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 That's the Algarve. That's like the Southern coast. So that's like about two hours away uh, from where I live. And it's just, got some of the most beautiful beaches in all of Europe and the water is kind of turquoise and it's pretty warm at the end of the summer. It's a vibe. Yeah, super fire. So um, you said you had a producer to help you out with your podcast? Yeah. Yep. Just yeah. Help. Just one person or you got more people on your team? Well, it's funny. Right now I have, I just got a second person who's booking. I have someone who edits and you know listens in when I'm on, and then I actually have a meeting this week with like a bigger umbrella company that may want to take me on and like pitch me another podcast and stuff. But we'll see. I don't know if it's totally aligned, but yeah. So I may end up having like a bigger team in general. Fire. What's one of your happiest moments with your podcast so far? Honestly, 
uh, oh gosh, was it last week or two weeks ago? I basically threw a friend at a party, met this really interesting, really amazing doctor. And he was just telling me, he, he was doing these crazy things like going to Antarctica and doing these tests and extreme conditions. And a lot of the stuff that he's devoted his life to is a lot of stuff that I've learned in the nutrition and health space. So we had this really cool conversation with this really awesome, accomplished doctor with like TED Talks. He speaks all over the world. And I really deeply connected on like what we both believe in in terms of like health and wellness. And at the end of the conversation, I was a little bit cheeky. I was like, you have to come be on my podcast. And he agreed. And we had the most fun conversation about a week ago. And at the end of it, I was like, I want to come work for you. So I may, it may lead to some interesting collaborative opportunities um, in a field that I'm really passionate about um, being able to work with and work for people who know a lot more than me. So a really cool growing opportunity. Yeah, super fire. You know, you know, like it's so fire how that um, podcast and it really has its own world. Yeah. You really think about that. Yeah. What brought you into it? Huh? How did you get started in podcasting? What brought you into it? I went to school for uh, radio and TV. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. I got into an accident, so it kind of slowed things down. And then um, in that process, I was like, I got to do something to keep myself going. And I started doing podcasts. Very cool. I mean, not the accident. That sounds awful. I hope yeah. everything is totally fine. It's interesting how life kind of throws us these curveballs and then we end up falling into other things or our life takes a different direction we don't expect. But then there's often a lot of really cool, fun surprises. And I'm sure maybe podcasting was one of those in that situation. Yeah. Helped me out a lot, too. Really? Yeah. Talking to, uh, talking to different people. How do you find your guests? Um, Instagram and email. Yeah. How about you? Um, a lot of referrals through friends. In the beginning, I just started by being like, I knew, especially living in New York for such a long time and doing a variety of different things, I feel like I had this wealth of really interesting people that I really respected. And it's a cool way to kind of get free five minutes of like someone's time too. So yeah. I basically in the beginning started to reach out to all, everyone I knew that was inspirational, that I had learned from mentors, people in general who were in cool spaces doing really specific, interesting things, and just asking for a conversation. And then recently, um, I, cause I've only been in Portugal for about six months, one of my new good friends here has done a lot of public speaking, she's in tech, she's in wellness, sort of in areas that I'm very interested in, and goes to lots of conferences, so she knows everyone. So she recently came as on as a, a booker and a co-producer because she was like, wait, I love your podcast. I have so many people for you. And she's like, it was a crazy list. So she's helping me with like booking and that sort of thing because we're very aligned in um, the stuff we're interested in, the types of conversations we want to have. And, and I think it's a really beautiful way to also like promote people who are doing cool things that I think need a bigger audience or, you know, have these small businesses or, you know, different like health practitioners as a way to like, get other people to, to really know what's out there. Right. And um, your friend, that's a real one. Got to keep her around. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She's great. Oh, my God. It's hard to uh, like get uh, you know, guests to come on your show. Yeah. After a while, I know. Well, you know what's so funny, too, is like there's you kind of assume, and I mean, you're probably like me, where it's like, I really love having conversations. You know, I think podcasting is really fun. Like, I like being on stage, all the things. And there's some people that just don't feel comfortable. So I was reaching out to certain people being like, of course she'd want to be on it. And like, I, you know, I have some previous clients that come on and, and it's just so funny because a lot of people are not comfortable and they're like, oh, and it was so cute. I had my dad on early on because he's been like a big, obviously a big part of my life and he's really an inspiration for me. And I couldn't believe how nervous he was. And then afterwards, he kept being like, is it okay? Do we need to re-record? And I'm like, it's just a conversation about you. Like, no, you did great. But people get really nervous. Right. They're not used to uh, like being interviewed and probably being on camera and talking and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think there is something around people feeling really worried about like I'm gonna say something and it's gonna live on, right? It's gonna it's gonna stay and people can go back and listen to it. What if I change and I think I it was interesting. I was I started to do a lot of podcasts like as an expert. So for years I've been doing other people's and I loved it so much. And I have the same fear, right? Where it's like, well, as I grow and change and evolve, like what I talk about, what I'm interested in, what I believe is going to change. Oh no. And then it's like, well, that's life. 
So of course, like if you, you know, I, I hope to do this for a long time. And if you go back and listen to earlier episodes, I think it's okay, right? And people get so afraid of like, oh, that's going to be this reflection of me that is going to live on forever. But I think it's really cool. I love it. It's it's a um, unique thing. You know, like when I do my book, my guest, I call it bookings. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, set times and days where I literally just like research different uh, podcasters and different buildings. And when I first started, I didn't really get nobody. And then about like two years in, I got like 200 guests plus. That's amazing. That's that that's amazing. And so you've been doing it, you've been at it for like two years? Yeah. Yeah. About, about three, going on four. Nice. And what are your long term goals? Like what's the what's the dream? To become like a huge podcast network that can help other podcasters. Maybe I can produce for them, you know, like make graphics, do mentors. Very you know, cool. And what has been your most exciting podcasting experience? I got a couple. Ooh, um, tell me. Are you into musical? Of course. Are you uh, aware of Chief Keith? No. <laughs> He's a big rapper. Cool. The drill scene. I just interviewed his artists. That's good. And uh, that's one of them. And um, the other one, are you familiar with Bow Wow? Yeah, of course. Bow wow. I interviewed his DJ and his producer. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and then another one that I liked was I interviewed the Connecticut State Boxing Champion. Oh, neat. Yeah. And what did you learn? What was the coolest thing you learned out of those three interviews? Honestly, from the music people, I used to watch them growing up and stuff like that. Um, I look at it as a miracle, and I look at it as like anything's really possible. To work at it. I agree. I agree. Well, it was so interesting. Like I, you know, grew up wanting to be an actress, and that's what I pursued in New York for a really long time. And it was really interesting where you look back, and it's it's a very hard career. But I got to do TV and film. I was a little bit like Sundance. And, the biggest thing I did for a while is I was, uh, did um, sketch on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And it was so funny because like, you have these moments where you're like, whoa, little me would have been so excited to know that I get to like be on TV and do movies with like, famous comedians and like have the best time. And I really, I agree. If you feel called to do something, if something feels like a, a deep longing and a passion for you, go for it. Like, whether or not it's really interesting i do this with clients a lot it's like whether or not you totally achieve that right you're either going to achieve that or something better that you, you didn't even realize you wanted you knew that you wanted which i see that time and time again with people in terms of finding love or new careers or you know they, they start with like trying to heal and so much of so many health issues come from like a disconnection from themselves right someone's true self and that makes you make all these often make bad decisions in terms of what you're putting in your body, whether that's or not sleeping enough or stress, or all of these things. And when you start to get more in alignment with what makes sense for you in effort to heal, I watch people like get dream jobs or fall in love. And it's cool. It's cool. I think you've got to go after the things that you really like are passionate about and then just be super open because you may be surprised by something that's far better. Right. And um sound like relating to what you just said is like um I look at it as Every no that somebody tells you no, that next yes is going to be better than that no. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. It's like if it's not opening, it's not your door. But there is a door that leads to something far better. And it's hard though when you you know we all go through those phases where like you do get a lot of no's or you know it things are really uncertain or really scary. But the ability to sort of pick yourself back up and put one foot in front of the other and really look after yourself and like really listen to what makes sense for you. It always turns out. And and often you look back to like with me getting really sick, I never probably would have pivoted careers. I never would have gone back and found this other passion, which I was like teaching and speaking and doing all this cool stuff in New York in addition to my acting career, which is cool. Um, but then led to this whole other career that ended up being a lot more rewarding. And it's so funny because it was really hard for me to let go of the acting career. So I worked so hard for it. Um, but then when I finally, 
allowed myself to, what I opened up to was like just so much more rewarding, so much more money, like just like all of these really beautiful connections and community that I never would have had before. And it's just, it's interesting. Life is so unexpected, but if you can kind of just trust and keep going, even when things are hard, I find the hardest things to give you, you know, when you look back, the biggest lessons and the biggest gifts. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, how do you handle um, challenging times and how do you handle it to stay motivated? Ooh, I mean, I think having good community is really good. Um, like having a couple of people that you can really lean on and that will just create space. I think like, like with therapy or anything else, just being able to talk it out and be like, listen, like I'm feeling so frustrated and stuff. And I'm a big fan of like feeling your feelings because otherwise you kind of will do weird things like drink too much or smoke cigarettes or something. So I'm a big fan of just like taking the disappointment, taking a moment to really step back and give me a, give myself space to like cry or feel it and be angry and like honor the disappointment or honor the frustration. And then after that reset, and, and there are certain things I would talk about with clients that I really believe it. Like we all have these non-negotiables, right? And when you take really good care of yourself, so you're sleeping appropriately, you're moving, you know, whether it's working out or playing sports or doing something to move your body to get energy and creativity flowing. You're eating things that make you feel good. You know, you're managing stress appropriately. I get back to basics. When things when things like crumble and I get frustrated and they get overwhelming and it's like I feel my feelings and I get back to how can I take care of myself really beautifully because when I do what happens is this sense of connection and clarity and the next new idea comes and the next new opportunity so it's like instead of you know I zoom in really tight and I just try to like what's the next right thing I need to do today and if I take really good care of myself and I really listen and do things that make me really happy and again it is it's sleep it's movement. It's eating that like nourishing foods, it's managing stress, it's connecting to community. And then I always think it's really important to have a few things that make you feel really happy. And that could just be like dancing around in your underwear by yourself, like little tiny things that like bring you joy. If you continuously really look at those areas of your life and you invest in them, though you get through those difficult periods feeling better and then you are ready for the next right thing to happen. Because I think often we get really disappointed or really frustrated. And it's really easy to disconnect, right? Eat junk, drink a lot, complain a lot. You know, get into these, get really um, disconnected from ourselves. And then when the opportunity may arise, you're not ready for it, right? So it's like trusting that I'm going I'm to feel the disappointment, I'm going to feel the frustration, I'm going to scream into a pillow, whatever it is. And then I'm just going to get back to me and take really good care of me. So when the, the right opportunity comes, I'm more than ready. That sounds like it will keep you on track. Yeah, but it's hard. I mean, we all have ways, we all have those moments, right? And it's really funny that you asked me that question because this is a big thing I talk about in my podcast where, you know, at the end, I always talk about life gives, always is going to guarantee opportunities for suffering, right? But it's right. how we pick ourselves back up we can really just be miserable and frustrated and drunk and like do bad, you know, like whatever, make bad choices. Or we can shift our perspective and be like, okay, how is this? And I think a really big question I ask myself too is like once I get over the feeling of disappointment or whatever it is, or even when I'm in it, it's like, I'm just going to trust that somehow there's a really profound lesson in this for me. So instead of thinking about like, why is this happening to me? Think about why is this happening for me? And it's like, okay, I don't know exactly why yet. I'm, I'm heartbroken. I don't know why he broke up with me, or I don't know why I lost the job, or the you know thing didn't work out. But I'm I'm guessing, and I can look back on my life now and see that all of those disappointments were really just gifts, right? After the fact, where I'm like, this, this, you know, I may be heartbroken or disappointed, but I'm gonna know that this is going to be for me in some beautiful, profound way. And then just trust, right? It's like a letting go and a deep trust that it's going to work out if you keep showing up and you keep honoring yourself. But it can be hard. And it's okay to have that day where you're like, fuck it, I'm laying on the couch. Sorry, if I'm not. <laughs> um, if you have those days where you're just like, today I'm not getting out of bed. And you're allowed to have those too. But it's like, okay, tomorrow I'll start all over. Right. So, um, because me, like, I'm on a go, like, 
every day, like in between like my job and everything I'm doing, you know, making time for like the fiance and all that. I'm always on the go with the podcast and work as far as like the business, trying to elevate. How about you? Like, are you always on the go? You know, like when things get like, you're trying to balance everything out as far as like getting the shows booked, getting the artwork done, um, getting the marketing done, the promo. You take breaks and then you get right back to it and you take like long breaks. Well, this is how, I mean, this has been really nice with having a producer because she carries some of this load. Um, and it's been interesting because she also does like film and TV stuff. So she's going into a season where the next couple of months she's working on a couple of films and we don't, she doesn't have as much capacity. So we're just like, okay, we're going to just release fewer episodes. I'm going to book more people. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to trust that this is the right thing. And it's funny because part of the reason I got really sick when I lived in New York, and I know New York City is like one of the most insane places, it's the best, but it was like so intense. And I'm, you know, what they would call a highly sensitive person. So the go, 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 go mentality, you know, ended up like me really stressed out. Stress is like one of the most toxic things for your body, right? So I was getting all of this autoimmune stuff that I was genetically predisposed to happening because my body was so out of alignment. And I, because as an actor, all you're always looking for your next job, right? So it is like audition, audition, and you get a job and you do the job and you work really hard and then the next thing and the next thing. And you're always, there's always this fear, like everyone's going to forget about me or I'm never going to have another job. Or if I don't hustle as fast as I can, I'm never going to make it there. And in that, and I think a lot of American culture, especially, is really geared around that, right? It's like, you know, sleep when you're dead, work really hard and then retire and sit on the beach. There's no balance around it. And what I was forced to do because I was so sick, I had to be, I was in bed for a year and I was in my late 20s. So I wanted all of my friends, you know, excel in their careers, to have babies, get married, and I'm in bed. And it is so frustrating and so, it was so awful, but it was this really beautiful lesson in balance. So for me with this and like with stepping back from acting and, and having my own business and moving, what I found, like the pandemic really brought, and I think a lot of people experience this, this, this slowing down and this shift that ended up making me feel better than ever and getting more clarity and more creativity. So from that, I really learned that for me, taking time to take breaks really refills my cup in, ter ter in terms of creativity, in terms of motivation. And so not over, you know, filling my schedule, leaving time for rest. And it was funny, that's how I ended up in Europe because the quality of life here, they just value rest and play and vacation in a different way that people don't in the United States. And if you want, you know, with this career, you want, this is a marathon, not a race. So it's so easy to get burnt out, especially if you really love something, but then it almost becomes toxic. So for me, I really like when I get more no's or we have like our schedule gets a little bit lighter, it's like, okay, this is just a beautiful opportunity for me to rest and go back and think about who I want to have on or what direction do I want to go in or how do I promote this or connect to more people. So I tend to, you know, I hustled really, really long and hard and it, it didn't serve me. And while I think it's incredibly important to have great work ethic, it is as important, especially as a creative person, to have those spaces of rest and replenishment because that's where the new ideas and the inspiration come. And when you can bring yourself fully to a project really well rested and excited, you get the most out of every experience. That's a real good way to look at it. Because it's, it's, and I truly believe, like, if it's meant for you, it will find you, whatever it is. And obviously, this is something that's very meant for you. You've been doing it for years and you've been at it, you love it. Trust that, like, there are going to be times that are really busy and you're going to flourish, and there are going to be times that are leaner. And when times are a little slower and leaner, it's like, ooh, this is actually just an opportunity for me to slow down and pivot and think about, like, am I bringing myself fully to this? Or is there something I want to do more? Or are there other people I could connect to and, and just get more inspired? And instead of feeling bummed out, I really always look at it as a gift. This is going to be a fire episode. <laughs> good, good. Um, you know, before we wrap it up, what's some um advice you could give, you know, from your point of view? How to lock out insults, how to um just keep going and just stay focused. Yeah, so if, if you're getting negative feedback, 
you have to remember, I, re I read this book years ago, um, and it had this really interesting passage in it that, that changed my life, and I think it's really beautiful. But it essentially said, what if every time someone communicated with you, they were either communicating love or a need for love? And so every time someone shows up and is a jerk and is insulting, it has nothing to do with you. It literally is coming from their own pain and wounding and disappointment or jealousy. Because often when you have a dream, right, and you're putting yourself out there, you're doing something cool, you're doing something that not a lot of people are doing, people get threatened, right? Because how dare you follow your dreams? How dare you put yourself out there? Like, I have, I'm so afraid to do that. I'm going to be angry at you. I'm going to put that on you, right? So, like, whenever you get negative feedback from people, know that 99.9% .9 of the time is about them and not you. And I always, whenever that happens, it's like, oh, honey, I'm just going to, like, quietly send you a little bit of love and know that, like, this is your pain that you're projecting on me because you're afraid or, you know, you didn't get your needs met or, you know, you're not living the life that you really want to be living. So what I'm doing is making you really upset, right? And then as far as, like, I, I have a big... Like, I think there are two parts to it. Like, I think the more you can take time and take care of yourself and check in on a regular basis, I'm a big fan of meditation because it really gets you connected to your creativity. It's really good for your brain, really good for your body, but it also gets you aware of, like, your thoughts and, and your stories. So it's a really beautiful way into your own creativity and your neurosis, essentially. But, like, the more you take time to connect to yourself and really listen, right, and really tap into the stuff that you really love, Trust that that's in there because you're meant to do the thing, right? So it's like, okay, I love this. I love helping people. I love, like, my coaching business. I love podcasting. I love connecting with people like you. I'm going to trust that I'm meant to do that, and I'm going to keep showing up and bringing, bringing my whole self to it and know that the right thing is going to happen. And on the other side, I think it's really important not to hold too tightly to certain ideas, right? And I remember I worked with this one business coach years ago. And she was like, what is this one? I, I was still acting. I had my side business. And she was like, what is your one idea? What's, what does success look like to you? And I was like, okay, I'm on this type of show. And it's on Netflix. And it's directed by Jed Apatow. And it's this kind of cast. I play this kind of character. And that's the only way I'm going to be happy. And, like, and on some level, there's a narrative around that in our culture, right? Like you go to it until you find the thing. And she was so interesting. She sat there and she's like, do you see that you're only giving yourself a tiny little sliver of opportunity to be happy? And there's so many things that you, you could be really good at that you could love that would make you happy. And she, it sort of blew the doors off for a second. And I was like, wait, no, I, I really want to go after my dreams. And she was, and it was so interesting because what you realize, and I saw this later in my acting career was like, I did get to go to Sundance and do a red carpet. I have gotten to do comedy with famous people. And it was cool, but it wasn't what I thought it would be. And it was so funny because what I was chasing, the feelings of connection and like storytelling and success and helping people and making people feel good was something I got from my coaching business. That was like, you know, not on TV, not famous, right? right. And like these these things that other people strive for that you would think would make you feel really amazing. I'm like, they kind of, they were cool, but they sort of felt fleeting and empty. And all of a sudden when I really went into my business further, I felt like really fulfilled. So it was this interesting moment where I start, started to realize that we have these ideas about what we think we want, but we actually don't know what it's going to feel like to get there. So I always tell people like to keep going in the sense of like, keep going in the direction of the things that like make you feel really excited and happy and like inspire you and light you up. And they are just the things that bring joy in your life. And then the rest of it have an open palm. Yes, I would love to continue to podcast. But if I somehow found something that gave me this joy that was over here, I would try it because our brains are so interesting, right? We can only create goals based on what we've already experienced or what we see other people do. So it's only based on the past, right? right? Often, life has something far more interesting and beautiful in store for us that we could ever imagine. So we might say no to things because we don't realize they're the thing that's going to actually deliver the joy, the love, the connection, the excitement, the money, whatever it is, because they were like, no, it's not our goal. So in that moment years ago, she sort of helped crack me open into the sense that like, you, you connect to what you love, you go for it, but then you kind of say yes 
and trust that the right things are going to come in and that everything that comes in is also going to teach you something. And when I get frustrated and things are hard, it's like, okay, I give myself an opportunity to feel that disappointment, but then I get up and I'm like, how do I look for the, the gem, right? Buried in this like disappointing thing. And how do I just get back up and continue to connect to the things that make me feel really good? And as long as you go in that direction, I see it time and time again, I've experienced it in my life. Your life will surprise you with the most beautiful unexpected gifts that you could have never imagined because they've never happened to you before. Right. Super dope. That was good advice. You know, this is a fire podcast. I'm going to be promoting this one like crazy. Oh, good, good. Oh, you are so good at this and you have, you're so fun to talk to. You have such beautiful energy. You have like such a deep sense of like calm that you bring to this that I think a lot of people probably love listening to your voice and probably feel that through the, through the airwaves. Yeah, really appreciate that. Appreciate you coming on the podcast. Absolutely. Good luck with everything. And I'll have to, I'll, um, you know, obviously tag me and everything. I'm happy to share and I'm happy to continue to watch your trajectory because I, I know you're going to do really big things. Appreciate it. Maybe we could do another episode soon. Absolutely. You let me know. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care. Peace.